Nikki, what's happening? What's going on? I need a neck brace for the overnight action here with the futures up, down, down, up, down, up. Whips, I know. I feel yeah. the same way here trying to trade this action. It's moving here. Were you trading the price line yesterday? Because holy cow, that I was thing not. got taken and beaten there yesterday. What do you I, think of price line? I was not trading it. Um, I let it run, and when they decide to hate it or love it, then I'll decide to trade it. But, uh, you know, last week we were thinking that it had a chance at a breakout if it held a, a certain level, but obviously that didn't happen. So if I pull up the chart here real quick, I can speak to it. Today, I wouldn't do anything right now as far as Priceline is concerned. Or actually, I wouldn't do – let's get, come back to conviction a little later. So I don't have a lot of conviction. What Priceline did yesterday is it's challenging a level that it's bounced from uh, one, two, three, four, five times, not including the October dip below it, and then this, the last one a couple of uh, you know a couple of weeks ago. So this is an area where it wants to defend or not, and I think it's going to depend on the markets in general. If the markets bounce, Priceline will bounce. It doesn't have any Priceline specific issues, other than its exposure to um, Europe, but. You know, every company is kind of exposed to Europe, just in sentiment at least. So no specific price line issues. If the markets hold, it would be a good long, cautious long. And I would do longs in price line via credit put spreads, but I'm not rushing into any of them. If it gets to 1165, 1170 with a market bounce that holds, that's the key, market bounce that holds, not just a 10-minute market bounce. Yeah. Then it may have make a run to 1200, 1225, but I'm not counting on it from now. I'm not rushed into it. What about the gap under there too? Does that really play? Would you be more comfortable if it came down and filled that gap at the 1080 level, or with your trading, you know, you could put it on, it could go down, and fill the gap. Really doesn't make a big difference. Right. Both of these are correct. Uh, I would feel better if it. Uh, reach the gap not because of the gap i'm not one to use gaps and moving averages at moving averages as action points they're more reference points sometimes they become self-fulfilling prophecies because the machines look for them but um, obviously the lower the better before i go long so yeah if it fills the gap i'll, I'll be more comfortable in the long unless i have a reason to, to fear it uh, so i don't have a price line specific specific reason the earnings will come late february so uh, then you know they usually deliver they rarely come out and say, oh, we've got an issue. Let's raise a flag. So uh, maybe if it gets weaker here, a long would be good because people will start pricing out, uh, price, pricing a good earnings. Uh, same deal with Apple, too. So I'm not rushed to go long it. I'd rather miss a few bucks. It does move $40, $40 $50 in one day, no problem. It moved $100 on earnings last time. So... Uh, I'm not rushing into it. Um, lotto tickets, if somebody wants to go long, it's fine. But let's prove the market that can bounce. I, I don't see a market that can bounce. Right now, no. Uh, Dennis and I, uh, we were talking about before we started the show, we were talking about the Twitter chart here. And uh, do you put any significance on, uh, boy, this 35.50 level. Holy Toledo. Huge. Look at that. Uh, is that something to lean on here? Or, you know, yeah, I, I almost went. It had a doji yesterday uh, action where it had long tail up and down and kind of closed in the middle. Uh, it did okay given the market yesterday. Um, it is coming up at a level like if you connect all the lows for the year, 12 months uh, daily, uh, you can come up with a level that shoots somewhere eyeball at 35. So that would be the level from which it breaks down, I guess. Uh, you know, lower low, lower highs from two, three months ago. But that is a, you know, I, I hate to say it's a momentum stock, but it gets bundled up in a momentum story. But it's a long-term story that somebody's going to figure out. you got to plug your nose and take it long if you want to. Um, so if I were to trade Twitter right now, I would buy leaps. If I think this is a low or a catchable low, I won't do it with short period of time. And Give if I don't want time. Yeah, if I don't want to allocate 36 bucks, I buy some leaps. Uh, just go out a year and just buy it and forget about it. Buy calls, buy call spread, buy call flies, broken wings, whatever you want. Um, and uh, you know, uh, Alibaba is kind of the same idea there because long term, you know, they should work out. Same with Apple. Long term, you know, they should work out. Although Apple not as dynamic as a story as the last two we mentioned. So, yeah, Twitter, if 
if you think that the markets are settling down, and I'm not buying that story yet, and if, if I do buy it, um, even though fighting alongside the bulls have been easy, and um, but you don't know when it's going to stop being easy, kind of like uh, you know Netflix or I should say probably Amazon is about you know the the market gives you a pass, 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 and then one day they'll say show me <laughs> and markets have been given the past you know the bounces happen quickly uh the negative everybody's of, of the same opinion which scares the heck out of me every expert you hear tells exactly the same story it can't be this easy folks right. i don't know uh the twitter just one comment on that before we move on the twitter too dennis and we talk about this you know let's say they come down and they clear out everyone that's leaning on that 35 50 level Take it back down to thirty, you know, thirty-five twenty, and then bring it back up, you know, and close above that level. That could be uh, if you're looking for a lower risk entry point. But you know, that's predicated on it, you know, going back down as well. Uh, I'm not sure who it was in the chat. Uh, they were asking us about Netflix. We Theo already, yeah, for Theo. Yeah, he's been very patient here. He asked about twenty minutes ago on our thoughts on Netflix, and we want to save this one for you, Nick. What do you think about Netflix? Netflix, the open interest this week disadvantages the, the bulls. So the bears have the upper hand with regards to open interest. Uh, starting at 3.30, there's resistance there. It's not a wall of any source, but it's still resistance. Technically, I'm looking at Netflix's broader picture since it broke down a couple months ago on earnings, uh, or almost three months ago. And uh, it's had lower highs, bouncing on kind of the, the same idea as, as price on. It has an important level of 320 area. Uh, you know, plus or minus five bucks is a level where it's defended all year. Uh, it broke some sort of a little trend uh, yesterday, uh, the lower end of it. So I'm scared of it because of those lower highs and bouncing on the same floorboard area. That floorboard needs to hold, otherwise it's going to break and you're going to head into the basement. So if I expand the the one year chart into a two year chart, I can get a clearer picture. Because if you just focus on the one year, you think, oh, it's close to the bottom. Well, pull up a two year. The bottom is way lower. It's in the hundreds. <laughs> so um, don't be a champion. Wait for confirmation of a bounce before you jump into it. That's my take on it. It does have if it if it reaches if it breaks 350, say 355, technically it could probably reach to 370 and then from there, I don't know if the markets hold. That's the caveat if the markets hold. If the markets sell off, it's really vulnerable. It's a momentum stock stock and it's a name that people love to sell and love to buy. So it cuts both ways. I am not rushing to go along Netflix. What now? Uh, you talk about well, if the market holds, or if you get confirmation of the market holds, are you as short term as me, and you're leaning on that 0950 low from yesterday, and uh, you know, see if that holds? Is that what you're looking for for confirmation, or you? You know, I, I know you're not, a, like you said, you're not a moving averages, or uh, you know. I've, yeah. I've been short the market for the last three, four months via credit call spreads in, in size. And before the end of the year, I closed almost all of them and they all were fruitful. I redeployed a few in the RUT and a few in the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ I booked and uh, booked profits in that, maybe too early, but that's what I do. I book it and I don't cry over uh, money left on the table. Um, the, the new shorts I have give room for more upside, meaning I'm still trading my thesis from last year because nothing has changed fundamentally for me. Uh, we have room for some upside. I don't see leaps upside. Uh, the only game changer that could come to cause that is a QE from the ECB. And I think now it's functionally more difficult than a month ago because of Greece issues, etc. So I'm fearful from a downside whoosh than an upside whoosh. So I'm more comfortable throwing credit call spreads to short the markets with some room to breathe and then uh, doing some credit put spreads shorter term to hedge those shorts. And that's how I'm, so I end up with an iron condor lopsided time wise. So I'm long the market short term with room to go down and I'm short the market longer term with room to go up. If what about makes... Apple? I want to take you on to Apple huh. here. I saw you tweeting App... about it there yesterday, Nick. Yeah. And I'm looking the last four days here. I think it's caught a few people by surprise. The resilient Apple has went from 115 and lost almost 10 points in four days. In fact, we caught a few people there long. 
Yeah, well, what happened with Apple is last week I tweeted, I'm buying puts in Apple on a hunch, and I think Apple was 112-ish. Oh. I got hammered on Twitter. Some jack. <laughs> some jack goes, well, I hope all the people that follow you lose money like you do. I was like, where did that come from? All I said is I have a hunch on Apple, so I'm taking puts. I didn't cuss it. I didn't say it sucks or anything. And th the next day it goes down, or the day after it goes down, though it touches 107.75, and then yesterday. So if they did follow me, they made seven bucks on the puts. If they didn't follow me and and took the opposite, thank you very much. Uh, so. and, and Nick, didn't you tell me you tried to tweet back at the guy and he blocked Yeah, him? and he already blocked me before. <laughs> blocked. Yeah, that's what you get for saying something about negative uh, Apple. You get blocked. Yeah, right? You can't say anything about negative about yeah, Apple. Not, not but, public. Uh, on a serious point on a serious point i wish i could share this i guess maybe i can share it uh the there has been a if i, I can draw a trend for the last maybe seven months in apple and i'm doing it right now maybe i can post it in your thing and yeah. it, it's it's in white dash lines once it comes up anyway so we broke out of the trend and that was the area where every time you ask me about apple on the show i'd say i don't understand this buy in apple i'm staying out of it yeah. right so i, I couldn't understand it and the now with yesterday's fall, the um, it's not letting me post it. There we go. Got so it. with yesterday's fall, it's um, it's back on the lower end of that trend. It's not a scientific trend. I'm not a technical analyst, but I use logic and I just draw lines that kind of make sense. Yeah, it looks like it makes sense to me. <laughs> yeah, those dashed white lines, they're not like the exact it. tops and the exact bottoms, but they kind of best fit. It's kind of like a almost a regression line around that area. So anyway, uh, so now we're back into it. However, with kind of like a negative spirit to this um, the, this price action. So long term, yes, I understand Apple, um, but it is vulnerable. It has been vulnerable, but it's got one thing for it. Now we know that the earnings are going to be January 27th, I think. So will the uh, traders start to price in a positive surprise on the earnings? I mean, I cannot imagine they didn't sell a jillion iPhones. Um, it, it makes sense the bigger size. I think people have left the smaller size in droves. So there might be an upside surprise there, but there's going to be a downside surprise, nasty one, on the, the pads. Because with a bigger phone, there's going to be less need for an iPad. Uh, Nick makes a great point there, and uh, he was talking about he didn't understand the rally in Apple, but you didn't let it hurt you in the pocketbook. You just let it go. You didn't play. You didn't play it from the long side, and you didn't say, "Well, this is ridiculous." They keep trying to play it from the short side. You just said, "Hey, I don't understand it. I'm gonna stay out of it until I have a clear picture." And then the picture came, and then you uh, you executed yep. the trade. So I mean, I think that that's you know that all goes back to discipline, and we talk you know yeah. we talk about that a I lot. I did try to short it at one point via puts, so I bought in the money, uh, was it January? I can't remember what puts, and they were losing money as it was rising, and then one day Apple whooshes down close to the top, I bailed out for even money. I was like, okay, that's my gift. I'm out. Thank you very much. And uh, so I got out that one day. But yeah, I did not do credit call spreads because I didn't understand it. Uh, you know me, I, I cannot, I'm, I'm a terrible poker player. If I don't have the cards, I don't play. And I don't bluff. If I don't have conviction, I don't play. You asked me yesterday, Joel, if I had if I had uh, put in new positions. I traded. I didn't put in any positions with conviction, meaning no size, just snipe here and there. I put in a couple of credit put spreads in order to hedge a few shorts that I have as opposed to try to book them early. Uh, they, they still have some life in them, so I want to take them a little longer. And that's all I did. I, I don't have conviction in the in the long story. Uh, I, I do have more conviction in the short story, but with room to go. So I'm not shorting the market here. Uh, I stood in front of it at 208, and I won. Uh, you know, I faced the devil at one point on the spy. Um, but, um, you know, I, I, I'm not deploying any new shorts from these levels here. Any short I put is a little out in time and has room to move. How's the uh, open interest shaping up in Apple for the remainder of the week? 
Uh, it has, uh, let me pull it up, but from memory, it is at uh, resistance. So the resist resistance starts to build at uh, strong at 110 and higher. Uh, the area of 105 to 10, uh, 105, 106 is supportive. Anything below 106 is supportive. Yeah. Uh, anything above 107 is resistive in nature, but 107 to 109 could be magnetic, meaning it could wash into 107 to 109. 110 is a big hard line uh, for, for the bears uh, this week. And what about the Googster? Not the owl, the regular right. Goog. You know, I've been talking with you about right. my put position, and uh, boy, yeah. I missed a golden chance when it uh, got down under 500 before. Boy, I was hoping it would get back to that level again. Uh, what do you got? Buy, buy, sell, or hold here? It does. <laughs> I can't tell you that. I can tell you where the prices are going to go. Um, the, oh, the, 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 the Goog, <laughs> the Goog this week, uh, today, actually, overnight, uh, got a little better, a little clearer picture. It looks like the bulls are trying to make a stand at 512 and a half. Uh, so if uh, they can hold that line, then they're good. It is a strong line of defense support for this week, at least as of today. And um, there is resistance that starts at 520. It could migrate between 512 and a half to 520. That's the Goog, not the Goog L. But the bad thing is that 525 and up looks really difficult for the bulls. So if they want to break 525, they're going to work really hard. And if they do break it, they're going to hit the 530 wall. And anything above that is just as equal as strong. So iron condors might work best on the Goog this week. Uh, I had a short my last trade on the Goog. Um, I think it was the Goog L at 567 and a half, 572 and a half credit call spread, which I closed early, but it was a complete, um, well, it was a, a win. It wasn't a 100% win because I closed it a little bit. I gave back a little money. Um, but that's, that's what I do. I, I don't try to squeeze every penny out of every trade. So good play is Iron Condor this week. Longer okay. term, it is vulnerable to technically so if the markets break down the goog is in danger uh if it loses the 510 505 area then uh, you know we might be talking lower from there just oh. technically speaking i like the company you do just, all right nick shaheen market five maven and author of create income with option spreads you can find him here on our airwaves every tuesday morning at 8 35 nick thanks for joining us We'll talk to you next week. Thank you, guys.